Good afternoon, Facebook followers and friends. Cat's Cooking Kitchen is back online with a recipe for uh, hamburger steaks. Had some hamburger I wanted to use up, and there's quite a bit of it, so nothing better than a good old hamburger steak with grilled onions and gravy over it. Dave, you got a female cardinal out at your feeder. Or not cardinal, I mean oriole. Thought you'd want to know. <laughs> we watch birds. Uh, so, anyway, yesterday I put a mix together of two pounds of hamburger, some salt, pepper, and garlic powder. I used a packet of brown gravy and a couple tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. Worcestershire sauce. However you guys say it, it's fine with me. And I'm just going to take a big old lump of hamburger. Not sure. Let's see. I have a handy dandy scale here, so let's just find out how big a piece I got. Trying for about four ounces or so. Oh, that's nine. That's too much. Four to six ounces. There, there's seven. That'll work. And. I don't really make them round, kind of make them oval. Can you see what I'm doing here? I guess I should move that hamburger out of the way. So, let's see. From the butt of my hand to the top ring before the top, to my top knuckle lying there. I've got that. My skillet's heated, so let's get busy. Not sure. There we go. Since everything's all mixed in, you don't have to mix it up too much. You don't want your hamburgers tough. You want them juicy and tender. Okay, there's the second one. I'm doing these about seven ounces. You don't have to weigh them. I just, I kind of just do it because I like them to be as uniform as possible, and some things I'm just goofy about. Hope I can get them all in the, oops, that's breaking. We don't want that. Let's fix it. Now you'll notice the hamburger looks a little brown, but that's because I put that Worcestershire sauce in there. Worcestershire sauce, gosh, I don't know. Whatever you want to call it. We love it in hamburger. Let's see how much I got left. Oh. Okay, we're going to have a couple of them at eight ounces instead of seven. Because that's just how it came out, folks. And like I said, <laughs> doesn't matter what size they are. But I think... Seven ounce portion. Portion once it's cooked, it's probably down to about four or five ounces of meat. So the pan a little bit. Okay. So I got five. Five big steaks cooking in that skillet. Let me give you a good view of it as soon as I wash my hands. You will not believe how good that smells already. So. There we go. 
five big hamburger steaks cooking in there. I'll need to get a spatula out. There's a good one. And I guess while we're waiting on that, I will cut some onion up. And I don't have a garbage bowl over here. Because it's sitting over here. Okay, have a nice big yellow onion. Uh-oh, might have to go my other onions. These are looking a little weepy in the middle. Let's see. Oh, no, it's not bad. Just this little centerpiece. It's a little miscolored. I'm not going to use it. It is fine, especially since I'm cooking it, but I'm going to go ahead, since the very tip of it has started to turn, and I'm going to cut that off of there. Now, remove our outer skin. Okay. Get this stuff out of here. Okay, now we're going to do... Oh, slice is about that thick. Can you see that? It's maybe a quarter inch. You don't want them too thin. They'll just fall apart when you start sauteing them. I'm not even sure that's enough onion that many steaks. You grab another onion. If I don't need them all, I'll use them for something else, but this doesn't look like very many onions. Another bad spot in an onion. I'll tell you, when this humidity comes in, you don't have much chance keeping anything, even in my air-conditioned home. So we're just going to cut the middle out of there. That's turned kind of, it's kind of papery. It's not really bad. It's just got paper on the inside for some reason. Oh, come on, there we go. This one's fine, this half. And get the skin off of this one. Oh, that's not good. That's a bad spot. Let's get that off of there. Again, that's where kind of the thick paper part. There we go. All right. Now we're going to slice these up the same way we did the other ones. going to brown the hamburger on both sides. I have it on medium heat. Oh, smells wonderful. I know it's going to taste wonderful. My one big one wants to crumble. The one side, the other side done. Uh, then I'll move them off to a platter, or in this case, a dinner plate, and hold them until I'm ready to put them back in the grilled onions and gravy. And then all they have to do is cook, and you're ready 
for a really good dinner. Team it up with some uh, broccoli, green beans, maybe some mashed potatoes or rice uh, to go along with it. It's uh, anything that you like. Most people love hamburger. If you don't like onions, don't use onions. Just make a gravy. Put them back in the gravy until they're done. Uh, if you don't like, I don't know. I don't know what, it, but my recipes are my my taste. What I, what I like, what my husband likes. You'll see me cook a couple of recipes with sweet bell peppers in them. That's because only I will eat that. Because my husband does not like it, will not eat it. But sometimes I want I want to have something with with that flavor in it. So I'll make it and I'll make him something else. But okay. So I'm gonna put you on pause until I'm ready to add the gravy. And I'm probably from the looks of it, this is really lean hamburger, and I'm not getting any fat off of it, not enough to uh, saute my onions, so I'll be back with you in just a second. Hi guys, welcome back to Cat's Cooking Kitchen. Uh, like I said, it has no grease in it. I mean, how unusual is that? That's some good hamburger. That is hamburger steak. That's going to be hamburger steak. So what we do need, a couple tablespoons of oil. I'm using uh, vegetable oil today. And I'm going to turn this down to medium low. From medium, cook the burgers or the steaks on medium. I'm just going to break up my onions into slices here. Get all these in the pan because everybody knows a grilled onion goes down in size. Any of you go to make a big old pot of greens or cabbage or anything like that and you just don't think, you know, anybody could possibly eat that much until you get it cooking. It just, like spinach, it withers down into nothing. I mean, it just really, really takes a lot of spinach to make a, a big pot. So. I'll finish putting these in and let them cook for a while and until they soften and then I'll be back and we'll do gravy. See you in a minute. Welcome back. We got some nicely grilled onions in our skillet. Got, I had to add a couple more tablespoons of vegetable oil because the onions were kind of soaking it up. And as far as I'm concerned, you can't ever have too much gravy. So now, I'm just going to take some all-purpose. I learned by watching cooking videos that people in the South call it plain flour. So, whatever you call it, all-purpose or plain, it's fine. I'm going to put a couple heaping, heaping tablespoons of flour in my pan. See how that works. That's thickening up nicely. Actually could use maybe half of another one. You want to stir that around, you want it to soak up your grease. You really don't want a lot of grease hanging around in your pan. Make your gravy really greasy. And you'll cook it around for like a minute or so. Just, I still have it on medium low. I'll kick it up to medium now. What you're doing is you're cooking that flour taste out of the flour. So your gravy tastes like gravy and not like flour. So you just stir it around. 
looking really good. Okay. I have some beef broth that I didn't warm up, but it's room temperature. And I have some leftover mushroom gravy from when I made meatloaf the other night, so we're going to add that into it too. Right now I'll start by adding in a little bit of the beef broth. Maybe I can get you guys close enough that you can watch what I'm doing in the pan better. There we go. I hope you can see that okay. See how that's thickened up? I'm going to just add a little more broth. About a cup at a time probably. I don't measure it. I don't know. As you can see, it's real, really, really thick. This is a four cup box of beef stock. I have my own chicken stock in the uh, freezer, and I also have box for quick if I decide to do something at the last minute. But I don't, don't have any homemade beef broth. So just going to keep cooking and stirring and seeing how we go. We got about 25 seconds on the microwave here. I'm trying to warm up the mushroom gravy from the refrigerator. Yeah, that's pretty thick still. Let's just put all four cups in. So you got four cups of gravy, two and a half heaping tablespoons out of my drawer, not measured tablespoons, and two large yellow onions sauteed in about four tablespoons of oil, vegetable oil. Now it's going to take a minute for it to thicken up, but while we do that, get this out of the microwave. I'm going to give it a stir down here. Okay. And there's our mushroom gravy from the other night, which is a little bit lumpy because I got in a hurry and I didn't make sure my flour was sifted through very well. It doesn't change the flavor. You really, most people wouldn't even notice, but I do. This is our gravy, down on low again. And now all we have to do, we've got the gravy done, we've got the onions in there, the leftover meatloaf gravy. And now we will just put our hamburger steaks right down in there and continue to cook them. See all the juice on that plate? That's because they're rare in the middle. And there you go. That's going to be one yummy dinner, I'm telling you. I'm going to put a lid on it. Let it cook on low till they're done. And then... I'm going to uh, set them off until time for dinner, and I will make another video that includes this, but this one will have the recipe on it for you, and that's it. See, that's it. We're done. We're done with the uh, hamburger steaks, and I can't wait to try them. I'm sure they're going to be delightful, so... Go out and, like I always say, go out and live your life with happiness and joy in your heart. Treat others like you want to be treated. And basically, just be kind to one another. That's all we can do for each other. Nobody gets anywhere by being mean or nasty all the time. So, let's try to be our very best that we can be on any given day. So, until the next time, thank you for following me at Cat's cooking kitchen. See you soon.